Chief of Pediatrics and Congenital Heart Surgery at Arkansas Children's Hospital, Dr. Jonathan Drummond Webb had the lowest mortality rate of all U.S. pediatric surgeons at 1.8%. He could repair complicated defects in hearts the size of an adult's thumb, and his flair with patients and families made him a surgical star, a hero in a 2002 primetime TV show. Here's a 325-gram baby he operated on weeks before he took his own life. He competed in triathlons to keep himself in shape for surgery, set a frenetic surgical pace performing three times the normal amount per year, 830 and 18 months, claiming, I have a bit of an extreme personality and what I do demands ultimate perfection. Some doctors would celebrate saving 98 out of 100. A hypercritical perfectionist, John would say, I lost two out of 100. His pursuit of excellence led to chronic frustration. He had extremely abusive parents. His father was jealous of him and didn't even attend his medical graduation. John's angst was internal. He judged his subtle imperfections and a voice in the back of his mind said, that's not good enough. I could have done better. He considered himself an advocate and protector of children as well as a surgeon. He implanted the first successful pediatric heart pump. Travis Marcus was first in the world to get a heart transplant, and that implant kept him alive till a donor heart was found. Dr. Drummond Webb flew to Houston to harvest the organ himself and gave Travis his new heart in November 2004. Determined to be home for Christmas, Travis left the hospital on December 23, 2004 with a bear hug from his doctor, who then went home and ended his own life. On Christmas, he barricaded himself in a study and overdosed on pain meds and alcohol. He was 45. He left a five-page profanity-laced note criticizing the U.S. medical system. John was married to the physician love of his life, who said he had no signs of depression. Even if he did, he wouldn't seek help for fear of how could he perform surgery with only 1.8% mortality if on drugs. In fact, his wife faced discrimination by med boards and employers because she needed antidepressants to cope with John's death. She had to fight to keep her own medical license. In 2017, I called his wife to ask if I could honor her husband. She said, you're the first person who's called wanting to honor my husband since he died 13 years ago. She told me, had my husband died of cancer, they would have erected a statue in the middle of town. Since he died by suicide, we've both been shunned. So please join me today in honoring the surgeon who saved the lives of thousands of children, all grown up now, thanks to the man with the greatest skill to heal the tiniest hearts.